be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless you his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts for the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. <coughs> Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. O oh, Heavenly Father, who has filled the world with beauty, open our eyes, behold your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation, we may learn to serve you with gladness, for the sake of him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Wonderful, filled with wonder. Today we use wonderful for something that's very good, but it still retains its original meaning of something that fills us with a sense of awe, of astonishment. It relates back to the divine, to God. And if I had thought about it, I would have played The Wizard of Oz on the TV back there, but instead I took the transcript from Warner Brothers. <laughs> I want to share Dorothy's farewell just before she returns home. Dorothy, oh, will you help me? Can you help me? Glinda, the good witch of the North, you don't need to be helped any longer. You've always had the power to go back to Kansas. Dorothy, surprised, I have? Scarecrow, then why didn't you tell her before? Glinda, because she wouldn't believe me. She has to learn it for herself. Tin Man, what have you learned, Dorothy? Dorothy, well, I think that it, 
that it wasn't enough just to want to see Uncle Henry and Annie M, and that's, if I ever go looking for my heart's desire again, I won't look any further than my own backyard. Because if it isn't there, I never really lost it to begin with. Is that right? Linda, nodding her head. That's all it is. Scarecrow. But that's so easy. I should have thought it for you. Tin Man. I should have felt it in my heart. Glinda. No. She had to find it out for herself. And to Dorothy. Now those magic slippers will take you home in two seconds. Dorothy. Oh, Toto too. Toto too. Now. Whenever you wish. Dorothy. Happily. Oh, dear. That's too wonderful to be true. Sadly. Oh, it's, it's going to be so hard to say goodbye. I love you all, too, to the Tin Man. Goodbye, Tin Man. Oh, don't cry. You'll rust so dreadfully. Here, here's your oil can. She gives him the oil can and kisses him. Goodbye, Tin Man, tearfully. Now I know I've got a heart because it's breaking. When Dorothy wakes up in her bed in depression air of Kansas in that sepia tone, how can she describe to her family what Oz was like. How do you teach someone to see in technical when they see in black and white? Snow. Precipitation in the form of small white ice crystals formed directly from the water vapor in the air at a temperature of less than 32 degrees Fahrenheit, according to Miriam Webster. <laughs> Snow, according to Annie Dillard from her memoir, An American Childhood. Now we sat in the dark dining room hush. The big snow outside, the big snow on the roof, silenced our words and the scrape of our forks and our chairs. The dog was gone, the world outside was dangerously cold, and the big snow held the houses down and the people in. Behind me, tall, chilled windows gave out into the narrow front yard and the street. A motion must have caught my mother's eye. She rose and moved to the windows, and father and I followed. There we saw the young girl, the transfigured Joanne Shee, skating alone under the streetlight. She was turning on ice skates inside the streetlight's yellow cone of light, illumined and silent. She tilted and spun. She wore a short skirt as Bakerton's Avenue, asphalt had been the ice of an Olympic arena. She wore mittens and a red knitted cap, below which her black hair lifted when she turned. Under her skates, the streets packed snow shone, it illumined her from below, the cold light striking her under her chin. I stood at the tall window, barely reaching the sill, the glass fog before my face, so I had to keep moving and hold my breath. What was she doing out there? Was everything beautiful so bold? Paris, the capital of France. How do you describe a city with a river flowing through the center of it, and yet there's a stillness? a peace that seems to emanate from its walls. Parable, a short earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Parables are postcards from heaven. They're a gift from God. They're God's way of teaching us to see in technicolor, to see what heaven is like. How can you describe the kingdom of God to us? Jesus says it's like a tiny little seed. And that seed grows, and before you know it, you're harvesting it. But you don't know how it happens, but it happens. Jesus is inviting us to see the world with God's eyes, to be filled with a sense of wonder, of awe, of joy, to recognize that each and every person, each one of us, is created in the image and likeness of God to see the world in technical, to see the world with the eyes of Christ, to see that the entire world itself is a sacrament of God's love. For 30 years I've been preaching on parables, dissecting them, and pinning them into a sermon. And today, instead, I invite you to be filled with a sense of joy and wonder, to see the joy in a butterfly flying, to see the joy in children, to see the joy in each other, to be filled with a sense of wonder, because life itself is wonderful. In Christ's name, Amen. Amen. I invite you now to please stand as we say together the creed and the prayers. Together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and is seen to have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. prayers of intercession. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, Scott, our rector, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Joe, our president, Ralph, our governor, and Kenny, our mayor, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. We pray especially for peace in the Middle East. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. We pray for Becky, Bill, Carrie, Catherine, Dona, Doug, Eleanor, Gloria, Henry, Judy, Kathy, Mary, Nettie, Piper, Peter, Shannon, Sean, and Ted. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual <coughs> shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the use of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Today is designated for the Union Mission. The new pews will come in tomorrow. It's going to take them a week or a week and a half to put them in place. We've got to get everything dusted. So we'll be back in the church on the 27th. Um, I do invite you to remain seated during the communion. It's just easier with the communion cups if you're seated. Anthem? <laughs>
all things come in thee, O Lord, and thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. subject to evil and death. You, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many to the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Where will the peace? Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take the remembrance that Christ died for you and bid on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I invite you at this time to take the communion cup. Receive the bread, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Turn it over to the wine, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Set us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Please stand for hymn 657, Love Divine, All Loves Accepted. 